Hey everyone, today we are going to be talking about how you can create your own late show except for Zoom. So let's get into it. First off, I'm Daniel Huang. I am the owner and founder of 1980. We're a management consultancy and creative agency. Before this, I was a management consultant. I worked for a large management consulting company and I also did a lot of creative work. Here's me doing photography work. I actually shot a wedding on this day. Um, but through that work, learning how to do photography, I also learned the audio side of the house and built out my home studio. I knew I wanted to get into YouTube and I knew I wanted to start a podcast. And so as the pandemic hit, I felt like I had the foresight to be able to build out the space. And as the equipment became really hard to get, I already had it sitting there in my space and I started building it out. And now I'm using platforms like mm -hmm, to push the boundaries of what we can do online. Now, John Oliver is a big, I'm a big fan of John Oliver. Um, he does a show, and then there are visuals that pop up right over there. Um, and also just Trevor Noah. Now that he's in a pandemic, now that we're all in a pandemic, they're doing the show at home, and he's got a crew that does the visuals and graphics. What I like about this platform is it lets me be a one-person show and get pretty close, which is good enough, especially for a Zoom meeting. Now let's get into equipment. I see a lot of YouTubers and people online using the Blue Yeti mic. I highly recommend not getting one. I got one myself. There are so many settings that you can get wrong. People speak into mic in the wrong direction. It's often just misused. It's a good mic, but sometimes it's misused. So let's talk about some really good ones. This is a Shure SM7B. If you want to be professional, if you want to record a podcast, this is the mic to get. It is the legendary SM7B. It was used by Michael Jackson in, in recording Thriller. Uh, but it requires a lot of equipment. I personally use the Electrovoice RE20. It's another radio broadcast mic. It requires a little bit of equipment, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but if for the average person, I recommend the Audio Technica ATR2100 series. I say series because there's different models that have been coming out. What's really important is you do get the USB version that lets you plug into your computer. And so this is a dynamic mic, meaning you gotta get really close to the mic, get up here in the space. And when you're up close to the mic, it is getting that full voice, but it's rejecting everything else. So if you're in an attic space like I am right now, there's a lot of echo. So this video is probably picking up a little bit of echo. I'm using what's called a shotgun mic. Now that piece of equipment I mentioned earlier, this one's a little bit hard to get. It's $600. It's the Rodecaster Pro. It's a big investment, but if you're going to be serious about doing this, and we think that the pandemic is going to be around for a while, this is one piece of gear that I highly, highly recommend that you consider investing in. I'd say invest in because you can do a lot more things initially, but over time you can definitely grow with it. What's great about the Rodecaster Pro is it lets does the processing internally. So if you have a mic like the Shure SM7B, or in my case, the RE20, um, it runs it through a series of processing, compressor, EQ, big bottom, all kinds of different things that I don't really understand, but it's magical. And then that signal gets sent out via USB into your computer. And so if you're doing Zoom meetings, you can definitely push the boundaries in terms of audio quality. Now on the video side of the house, I just got the Blackmagic ATEM Pro. It's a switcher, so you can plug in four HDMI sources and change different views. Now I'm using mm -hmm, which is designed really around one camera angle and this kind of view here. But I can switch to a live streaming software and do multi-cam video. So I can have a wide angle shot, I can have an overhead shot, and can I get the what's happening on my desk? I can record the screen. There's just a lot of things you can be doing with this. And so in my future videos, I'm gonna be incorporating this into the show. It's technically really complicated, and so I don't recommend the average person get it. Start with just one video source. Now video source, talking about video source, you gotta have good lighting. And so for many people, I do recommend the Falcon Eyes flexible LED lights. Uh, it's running around $300 or so. You got to put it on a stand, um, but it kind of creates a flexible light and it is really bright and it helps brighten up the space. Now, if you want to get serious and I haven't gotten to this point yet, but the Aperture 120D is the gold standard for lighting. It's got this big umbrella. It's going to give you that diffuse light in that perfect lighting. Uh, Godox is the alternative brand that's been popular lately and they come in at a much lower cost. But again, this is some serious equipment, and so you gotta make sure you're ready for that. I personally, I just for, for mentioning, I do use a Rotolite. I use this for some of my previous work. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily, but it has been pretty good for me. Uh, the 
output lighting is pretty limited and so eventually I will get to an aperture 120D or at least a Godox equivalent of it. Now at home in my office, I'm not there right now, especially when I'm not filming using this format right now, I got a green screen behind me. Um, I'll use my Philips Hue lights to kind of create different ambient lights. I can change the background lighting, I can change some of the accent lighting, different colors, and kind of create different scenes depending on the mood of the video. I also got the Aperture MC, which is a small, tiny USB chargeable light, uh, just as an accent light. It's about $100, uh, but it does give you the ability to play with a little bit of lighting, just a little bit frivolous. Now in terms of mics, uh, cameras, if you can't get a professional camera, I do recommend getting just a Logitech webcam. Uh, this is the 4K version, they can go pretty expendy. It's really hard to get one now just because of the pandemic but a nice quality webcam will get you much further than just what you have built into your laptop. I personally use the Fuji X-T3, which is what you're seeing being filmed right now, but if I were to do it over, I would probably get the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. It's a cinema camera, so it's designed to be heavily used. This camera will overheat. Uh, the camera that I'm showing uh, using right now will overheat if I use it for too long and it's shut off. These cinema cameras are designed to just be running all day long on a power source. They're just built like a tank and it's designed for production work. I think that's what I'll get eventually, especially if I'm getting more serious in this space. Now, we talked about equipment and everything. Now let's talk about sound, right? I'm in my attic in a different home, so there's probably a little bit of echo. And so what I, you would probably wanna get are some sound blankets. Hang them up outside of the frame. And what it does, it absorbs some of that echoey sound and it creates a more fuller sound. You can also get foam, which I do have at my home studio, double side tape or, or spray adhesive, apply it to the ceilings, different locations. Again, you wanna absorb some of that uh, echo that's going on. Now these are, this is the reason why it's really hard and why most people don't have a home studio. It's because it requires so much work tinkering around with so much stuff. And in terms of tinkering, this is not my shot, but this is just a stock photo I got. There's a lot of wires. There's wires all over the place. You need a dongle and a cable and an adapter. Those costs add up pretty quickly. And that's why you gotta rig out things, be creative when you're building out the space. It can be challenging, but if you're dedicated, it can be done. And so if you wanna build a home studio office and if you wanna kinda create an experience like this for Zoom using Mm-hmm, I definitely start recommending researching into some of the basic equipment, building out your kit, getting the basic minimums to get started and then growing along the way. Customize your, your studio space to your style, and the more you practice, the more you work, the more you're actually looking into the camera versus looking down will help tremendously improve your online experience. Hey, we're all stuck in this together, so remember, apply your skills. Let's make the world a better place. If you wanna learn more, I'm gonna be putting together a learning uh, series in my membership platform, 1980.io. There's a limited alpha membership going on right now, which is lifetime membership to some of this programming, but the price will go up very soon, especially as the pandemic is starting to go away. I'm gonna go back to my regular rate, but for now, definitely highly jump in. I'm gonna do a deep dive research and a spec sheet in terms of how you can build out your space, and I'll be adding it to 1980.io. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope this was insightful. Check out mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. M -M -H -M -M app. Dot app. Anyways, there will be a link somewhere. It's in beta right now, but definitely check it out. It's an interesting thing. I think it's going to change the way we do online meetings, uh, but it's definitely in alpha stage right now. Let me know what you think of this video. Give me a like, thumbs up, comment. I appreciate you.